Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and I was looking at some messages, and I had a really good one. It reminded me of something that I did not put in my flood video, and I wanted to. Now, when I made that video, I had this nagging suspicion that I was forgetting something, and a message today reminded me of what that was, and I thought it was an excellent message. Here is a video I made a few years ago, Underwater Ruins of a Prior Time. But in this video, I go over a discovery by Robert Ballard at the bottom of the Eugene Sea, some stone circles. And the question was simply, have we had any more information on these? And I thought that was excellent because I have stated, I am just waiting for more information to come out on these stone circles that were found. But first, let me just play the clip from this video. And when I uploaded this, I did not have nearly as many subs as I do now, and I'm sure this is new information for a lot of you. And I will leave some links below, but let's just listen to Robert Ballard and what he has to say about one of his most surprising discoveries. Because we constantly are making discoveries. We just, we just got back. We were out in the ship, and we were doing all sorts of crazy things, and we were doing a thing with National Geographic on the Battle of Gallipoli off of the, in the Aegean, uh, looking for these warships uh, from the time of uh, World War I, and we found them, and we're all sorts of cool. And we're looking, but what I love about what I do is most of the really important discoveries I made were done by accident looking for something else. I didn't expect to find those clams. I didn't expect to find those black smokers. There's so many of my discoveries that I did not, I stumbled on them. And here's another classic example. So National Geographic says, go find these warships. And we go, yeah, cool, we know sort of where they are. We'll mow the lawn, find them. So I'm going in here, and I'm trying to find a battleship called the HMS Triumph up here off Anzac Beach. And we found it. But as I was coming in on the area where the battleship was, I look over my sonar, and I see this. I see a ring, a circular ring that's 45 meters across with a, some sort of structure in the middle. What is that? That is probably a site of human habitation 9,000 years ago when that particular piece of real estate was above water. A Neolithic site, one of the oldest now discovered. And we went down and walls of stone, we found 12 of them. We're heading back there to do some more on them in a few months. But answering Leslie's question here, I just did a search for stone circles, a GNC, Ballard, and nothing came up. I was hoping to find some pics. There is, I noticed one down here of the shipwreck, and there is one right here of the side scan sonar imagery. But here is the side scan sonar, the imaging of where these stone circles are laid out. The shipwreck is in the top left here and it does seem that these stone circles are laid out in somewhat of a pattern but they are 40 meters across that's about 130 feet so these are very large stone circles and they have something in the middle that was stated now i'm going to read from the pdf here coming from the oceanographers who were in anzac cove about nine years ago including robert ballard it says, the entrance to the Dardanelles Strait in the north of GNC was the site of one of the greatest maritime battles of World War I. Mines sank a large number of warships during the Allied fleet attempt to storm through to Istanbul in March 1915, and U-boats sank others a few months later during the ANZAC, which stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, landing on the Gallipoli Peninsula. In 2009, the first expedition of Nautilus filmed and documented some of these wrecks for a National Geographic documentary. It says, during the side scan sonar imagery survey of the World War I battle area, we found a circular feature on the seabed in close prox proximity to the Triumph wreck. Hercules explored this feature, which was made up of a ring of various sized rocks with a small pile in the middle, visible in the lower right corner of figure two. Now here in this one page, it talks about their discovery in Anzac Cove. It says, at Anzac Cove, we were able to map a stone circle feature both acoustically and photographically. And here is a look at the close-ups of the rocks that comprise the stone circle. One almost looks like a vase right there. But here is some imagery. 
the side scan sonar and photographs of this stone circle that I would guesstimate is at least 12,500 years old. Now from overhead, the stone wall making up the circle appears to have some thickness to it. And in the middle here, you can see some larger stones or is there a little gateway coming into this central area? It's a little murky, a little hard to make out, but appears to be some sort of formation of something in the middle here. And of course, the ancient symbol for Ra, the symbol of the sun in Egypt, is a circle with something in the middle. Does that have anything to do with it? Probably not. But they were probably tracking the heavens at this stone circle. That is just a hunch. Now in that clip, Robert Ballard says that human habitation might stretch back to 9,000 years ago in this area that is now submerged. But this is an area of research that has really expanded, really even in the years since that clip was uploaded about nine years ago or eight years ago. So let's just listen to Randall Carlson talk about sea level rise and what we know now. This spike of warming right here is 11,600 years. Now, if we look at the next one here, this graph basically goes to a different realm of evidence. And what this shows is the average, the rate of sea level rise, you see. Now, <clears throat> oceanographers and marine geologists have, have been studying, there's, there's a number of different ways they can correlate this information. They can look at actual evidence of submerged shorelines, right? They can look at, at changes in the, in the flora and the fauna that have, that have lived in the oceans. Um, they can look at coral reefs. Uh, there's a lot of different things that they can pull together <clears throat> to see how rapidly sea levels rose at the end of the last ice age. And again, a generation or two ago, the assumption was is that there was a smooth continuum of rise that took tens of thousands of years, right, to get us from minus 400 feet up to what we are now at the present level. What this graph shows is that there were two massive spikes of meltwater introduced into the oceans, into the global oceans at the end of the last ice age. And you can see the first spike called meltwater pulse 1A is the biggest, followed by another one, meltwater pulse 1B. If we go back to this graph right here, those two spikes of glacial meltwater and sea level rise coincide with this warming spike and that warming spike. And you can see how this warming spike seems to be the most intense, followed by this one. And we see that meltwater pulse 1A is the biggest. Mm. So what this is showing is that the, that the rise in sea level was not as smooth. It was like whoomp and then whoomp again. So there was some. But I did find this tiny little article on Nautilus Live and this is a very cool website. They have live streaming videos from their explorations at the bottom of the ocean, and they have one even within the last 24 hours. But they have just a tiny article on what they found here. July 2010, this is dated. It says, today Nautilus's ROVs were back in the water to map the area and gather more information about the stone circles previously discovered at the bottom of the Aegean Sea. The scientists have seen about a dozen stone circles at depths ranging from 50 meters to 75 meters. The circles are about 40 meters across. So far, no artifacts have been found in this area to give clues about their origin. And it says scientists are still gathering information. Well, we have a depth here, 50 to 75 meters. So I think that's about 165 to 250 feet or so. So according to what Randall Carlson said in his talk with Joe Rogan, and this graph represents the rate of meltwater introduced into the ocean. This is not a graph of ocean levels. So these stone circles, or at least some of them certainly, went underwater at least 10,800 BC when this initial spike was introduced into the world's oceans. So we can give a date to these stone circles. Certainly, they are minimum 12,800 years old. And does that make these the oldest stone circles on Earth? We can't date the stone, but we can date the sea level rise. We can date the depth these are at. But I'd like to thank Leslie for that message. It got me to 
reinvestigate this, and I know a lot of you have not seen this, so that's why I uploaded it. I think this is very important information. The information seems to come from the initial discovery eight or nine years ago, but I'm sure the crew of the Nautilus is out making discoveries almost every day. They seem to be by their website and how active it is, and I will leave plenty of links below, but I think this is important. I think it's important for me and people like me to have channels like this is to reintroduce these stories that are so important, one of the oldest stone circles on Earth, and the information has just kind of disappeared over the last nine years or so. So I wanted to reintroduce this. It's very important. One of the oldest Neolithic sites on Earth. It's underwater, and I'm going to certainly keep this story going. Hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.